Since I was a little kid, I don't really know why, but I always liked math. Sounds a little weird, right? Well, that was probably because when I was doing problems, when I was solving them, I felt like I was doing something with it. I wasn't just learning things from memory, then I would forget a week later, like with some other subjects. Well, growing up, I understood something about math. What is math? Do we have any, do we have any ask yourself, what is math? Well, math is a study of patterns. My other big passion was music. And once I was to learn how to express myself through music, I would talk through my instrument. I understood something else. Music is made out of patterns too. Like this one. You probably know it. I can bring it up, but... Or down. You know this one, right? Well, in math, we tend to see patterns as something abstract, as abstract entities. When you put them into music, they sort of come alive. So I want to dive deeper into this connection between math and music. But what is it about? So first, we have to back up a little. It's 600 BC, ancient Greece. Pythagoras, you probably know him. But one day, Pythagoras was playing, and he was experimenting with a string plucked at both ends. Just like the one on the guitar. But playing with the string, he found out that the vibration of the string wasn't just producing one note. It wasn't just producing one single pitch. It was producing other, other pitches, like this. Well, Pythagoras called these pitches the overtone series, or the harmonic series. And the interesting thing that he found out that the frequencies of these other pitches are whole multiples of the frequency of the first note. So that might sound a little boring. <laughs> but mathematically, if you group these into pairs, they will come out as simple whole number ratios, 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 4 over 3. OK, let's talk about music now. <laughs> Musically, if we take two notes, we call them an interval. So when we play these Pythagorean intervals, see so the first one, 2 over 1, we call this the perfect octave. 3 over 2, the perfect fifth. 4 over 3, the perfect fourth. Perfect fifth, octave, fourth. So when we play them, when we listen to them, we can tell that they're sound, they, they, they sound good. They sound good. Like, let's take the perfect fifth, for instance. The interval is th the ratio is 3 over 2, OK? But we take another interval, like the augmented fourth. Some people may be hesitant to like this combination of notes. Well, the ratio in the augmented fourth is 729 over 512. When well, the perfect fifth is 3 over 2, much more simple, yet pure. Well, Pythagoras would say, the simpler the ratio is in an interval, the more natural it would sound to a hear, the more pure it would sound. So on the guitar, I can take a note and go a fifth above from there. And with this pattern, play a whole song. You don't believe me? Well. So what's about this perfect fifth, this 3 over 2? Let's see. If I take a note, I go a fifth above from there, like A. I'll find E. Go another fifth above from there, I'll find B. And so on. If we move with this interval, we can see that we went back all the way to the point I started, going all over the 12 pages of Western music. Is that incredible? Just by using this simple mathematical interval, this 3 over 2, that Pythagoras was flexing hard, with fellow philosophers. <laughs> what if I play some chords? Conduct that on this diagram. I'll start from C. And then I'll go to E. It's not a big leap, right? So what if I play all the chords between C and E, following along the circle? So I'll play C, play G, play D. I play A, and then I play E. See how powerful that sound? We're just moving along the circle. We'll do nothing more. Play C. And yet, moving along the circle, we create a song. But I wasn't the first one 
discovering this chord progression. In fact, one guy playing these chords, he said, Hey Joe, we're going with the gun in your hand. Hey Joe, I said we're going with the gun in your hand. Moving chord by chord in the circle. We discovered Hey Joe by Jimi Hendrix. Is that incredible? Wow. Well, there's much, much more about this. Western composers have used thousands and thousands of different patterns in the circle, not always moving along on it. Like if I play a chord like C, and then move to the chord close to it in the circle, so I'll play F, and then I'll play the other chord close to C in the circle, so I'll play G. Where do you want to go? You want to stop here? You want to end here? Don't feel like oh, weird. We want to go back there. We want to go back to the point it started on. So why not go back to C? We'll feel kind of satisfied. Well, it doesn't matter what I start. I can start on A. When I play the other chords like D and E, it's not over. We want to go back south. We want to go back to the point I started on. And when I play A, for the sense of relief, for Western composers, this is at the foundation of Western music, from classical to pop music to blues to rock to country. I'm going to play again some more chords. I'll play A minor. Then I'll play D minor. I'm once again following on the circle. Then I'll play G. Then I'll play C. Then I go on F. Then I go on B flat. Then I go on E. Now I'm close to A. We don't want to end here. We feel this sense of incompleteness. We want to go back somewhere. We feel this tension, this magnetic pull. And when I go back to the chord, the first chord, we feel kind of complete. Well, music is the pleasure that human mind experiences from counting without being aware that it's counting. In the end, what is the perfect fifth? What is the perfect fourth? perfect octave. What are all these intervals that make music sound so pleasant to our ear and that somehow have influenced a thousand and thousand of years of music composition? Well, there are nothing more than simple mathematical ratios that create a language with whom an entire culture has been able to speak and communicate for thousands and thousands of years. Thank you.